Okay, there's various reasons why we might need to get inside of a CEREC unit. And of course, if the CEREC unit is off warranty, uh, we're free to go inside there and we can make some modifications. Sometimes we have to go in because something's not working right, and other times we want to upgrade things. But uh, the basic tools that you'll need to get inside of these is a Phillips head screwdriver. That'll be used when you get to the computer chassis in there. Uh, a, fl a small flathead screwdriver, that's used to get one of the... Uh, connectors off the back of the uh, unit, uh, actually the capture part for the uh, CEREC camera. Uh, another flathead to get some of these panels off, and most importantly, a T20. So T20 is going to be used to get most of these screws out of that unit. Now, these units have multiple screws. When we take this cover off, there's going to be two screws here, there's two here, there's one long screw with a nylon washer, and then inside this battery chassis, there's also a screw that's medium length. Unfortunately, this unit's missing that medium length screw, but that'll be taken off with the T20. So let's go through it. I'm going to set this up here. Should be back far enough. We'll move this out a little bit and we'll go through this whole process. Now, we're going to undo the first panel. That's connected to a fan. So we go right here. We undo this. Now there's down here, it's connected to the chassis. So I'm just going to put that right back for just a second. Take this other panel off first. Okay, flip that out. If you'll reach up in here, you'll feel them. Just unplug this with your finger. There's another one that plugs in there that you can unplug with your finger. But anyway, I did the one I needed to. This and then lift it out and you see this is what it hooked up to. All right, then you go to work with your T20. I like to uh, sometimes get a little ice tray or something and put all the screws in it. This, In this case, I'm just going to put them up on my desk. Um, <clears throat> but overall, these... Uh, uh, screws now sometimes there'll be a little cover on these this one didn't have one but there'll usually be a little nylon cover and you got to take that flathead and pop those out save those set them aside um, in europe uh, all, all these screws have to be covered on electrical gadgets um, not necessarily true on, ele on electronics in the u.s but anyway undo these screws to get this back panel off come on i'm usually faster with that on this than that Okay, there's another one. These are all the same size. Uh, there'll be some other screws inside here that are also the same size. Okay, we flip this off. This is where the backup battery is located. Okay, you can just unplug that backup battery right now down there at the bottom. Now there's a longer screw down here with a nylon um, bushing. And then there's a medium sized screw back in here. Uh, this unit's missing that medium screw. But at this point, I should be able to pull the panel off the back here, okay? So again, remember, there'll be a medium screw right down in here. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that screw there, set the panel aside. Now we're inside here, there's various connections. Okay, this is a SATA connection. Um, here it connects to the CD drive. Here you have a couple antennas. Uh, sometimes they're on here quite tight, then you need to, um, sometimes a crescent wrench or a pair of pliers to get this going. But undo those guys, usually I just set them aside, get them out of my way. Uh, always when you're putting all this stuff back, that's the harder part of not letting these things get tangled up. Remembering to leave this unplugged till you get the panel on and then plugging it in. But I'm um, taking off the antenna wires now, there's an antenna here and here. Get that out of our way. The next thing we need that small flathead screwdriver to uh, get this guy off. That's for the um, capture card for um, you know our camera. And so down in here there'll be a flathead. Rotate him around. Okay. All right. That starts to get loose. Work this until you find it. The connect connection to it. All right, so that comes off so you can see it's a serial port connector. Then these guys all have, um, I, I used to always label this stuff, but the reality is it can only fit in certain ones. So this one here has three prongs. This one here has about nine or 10 prongs. And this one here has four. Um, and so we set that aside. Then we have the DVI connector. We undo that push it aside. Now these guys, uh, I like to put them back in the same order they came out, but you don't have to do that. But if you do, I just put little numbers here with a um, Sharpie pin and a piece of tape, and then I know, okay, that. But this is a 
a lot of USB connectors. Only this here is a, a network connector. The rest are USB connectors. Uh, and sometimes you'll have a fourth one for a radio on the newer Serif units. Unplug the power unit. You can just uh, flip this guy this direction. Unplug the power unit. Unplug the backup battery down here. Just fold those under underneath. Okay, and now you're almost there. Now, typically, there'll be two screws here and two here. This one, again, is missing those two of those screws. All right, and that, again, is the T20. You know, undo this. Set that screw aside, undo this. Set that aside, then you would go down here and undo that screw and undo that screw. And at that point, you lift this plate off of here. And now, if we keep these guys out of the way, we can slide this whole chassis out of here. Okay, and there we go. And that's how you get inside your Seric unit. Now down below, down here, there's some filter things that we change periodically in these units. To get inside of this unit here, these three screws are Phillips head. That's what this guy was for. And this, these screws are different than the other screws that you've been taking out of the chassis. Just undo them, set them aside, and then you'll have access inside. Now, uh, things that you can do, sometimes, uh, <coughs> For sure, you can add more RAM memory in the um, 2015, 2016 models, which have a MSI uh, uh, X99 uh, Raider. You can uh, add a faster, a way faster hard drive. This one already has one of those because it's a 2018, 2019 chassis. And so now we're inside. I'll show you that and what I'm planning to do here. So in this instance, here is the hard drive, a very fast M2 drive, um, about 10 times faster than a typical uh, SSD drive. And here's the RAM memory, and I'm going to update this one to 64, which is the maximum, I believe. Maybe it can go to more, but 64 is certainly high. The things we see in here, your video card, this is a Radeon video card. Sometimes you'll have... Uh, uh, NVIDIA, in this case Radeon, AMD Radeon. This is your uh, capture card for the video camera and um, the CPU. This particular motherboard, I believe, could be updated to an i9. It currently has an i7. I might get to that some point in time. Faster is always better, usually. Okay, that's it. Okay, we went ahead and uh, upgraded the RAM memory in this unit. We slid it back into the chassis. We Put the power supply and the backup battery on it. Now we're going to go forward and start connecting some of the other things in here. First thing you do is uh, put this bar back in place. That's going to hold this in place. I'm not going to screw this in yet till I confirm that everything is working. But uh, as you're hooking things back up, I like to start with the antenna cables first. So we like to loop those antenna cables through there, line them up, and just screw them down into the uh, Wi-Fi card that's in uh, these units okay and uh, there we go that's hooked up just have to be finger tight come through with this one bring it through here line it up here bring this in make it finger tight all right the next step is to hook up the uh, uh, camera okay so push that in. That's going to take a small flathead screwdriver. You take the small flathead, line it up in here with the flat screw. Just start it going. You'll feel it starting to snug in there. That one's good. We go over to the other side. Kind of rotate this till we feel it engage. There it goes. And now snug that up. All right. I gotta uh, eat. I gotta work. I got a headache. Come on out first. I'm recording a video. I'm sorry. That's all right. And then uh, the next thing you do is to hook these up. As I said, these have all different uh, uh, connectors. This one's multiple connectors on it. That's going to go to this middle one. This other one here has four connectors. That's going to go to this one here. Uh, and then here's the other one. This one has only three connectors. Hook that up. Sometimes a good idea to number these. But hook all those up. Then the next thing here is the DVI connection. Hook that in there and snug it up. 
Okay, after you get those guys done, you're gonna go down here and put all these back in. This one here is a network connection. Put it in the network port. Plug this in here. And said sometimes I like to number these so when the computer boots up, it's not refiguring out where the USBs are. Put that in, put that in, and okay. All these things are hooked up. Now, what I can do at this stage, uh, I have one other thing, the SATA cable. You know, lower it down, push that in its place. All right, like that, and everything's hooked up. All I gotta do is bring the electrical supply over here, hook, hook up the back up battery. But remember, I'll take this back out when I go to put the back panel on because you have to put this in after the back panels in there. Then you slip that down in there. Also, we can hook up this here. We don't worry about the other fan that's connected up, but this is one of the lower fans there. And we hook this up. And what, you, what, found. what you should see is that there's a uh, yellow light. Let's turn this around. We'll click the button, see if it boots up. All right, it's a good sign when the light comes on on the monitor to start off with. <sighs> so we've updated the RAM memory in this, and so if everything works, it should start coming up on screen. I'm not seeing too much yet. Maybe it didn't like that RAM memory, we'll see. CPU memory, please enter the setup. And so we push F1. And all right, we'll stop there. Okay, we're back. We're going through the whole gyrations again and this thing recognized that I changed the memory in it. And here now we're starting to boot into Windows. And so it's looking good, there we are. Everything booted up, the system's ready to go. Now what I'll do is I'll turn it back off. I'll unplug a few of these things like this electrical guy here and the backup battery. We'll put the back panel on. We have to make sure it lines up over here and over here. That's the probably the most difficult part of doing it. It's a fairly simple task, but that's you got to line that up and that up, and then you start uh, putting the screws in, and uh, and that's how you can upgrade your system.